My name is Caroline Barlow and I'm head teacher of Heathfield Community College in East Sussex and I'm really happy to share a few thoughts on the topic of teacher wellbeing and workload. The one thing I would say right at the start is that this is a complex issue. Many aspects of school interlink and overlap and I'm picking even one of them to see if we can make an impact can be quite an unwieldy task. I do think there are both big things and little things that we can do that make a difference. I'm going to focus on the bigger things that we as school leaders can have an influence on because I think there are loads of blogs and videos already by people who make really good valid points about the things that we as individuals can do that can make a difference. I'm going to focus on three main areas, clarity into which I'm going to sneak consistency, professional trust and time. For me clarity is really important, it's about knowing what we're doing and why we're doing it. And for me in schools, that's often simplified and seen in ways like having a very straightforward school improvement plan with minimal tasks attached. Having a very clear teaching and learning vision, again, with very few but very clear prescribed elements. And also it's about having very simple and easy to use consequence and reward systems so that actually everybody knows what's expected. This is where consistency comes in. For me as an individual teacher, if I'm not doing the same thing as the teacher down the corridor, I'm making their life more difficult. As a leader, if I don't make my expectations clear, I'm creating difficulty for everybody else. Underpinning all of that is professional trust, which is about an understanding that not one size fits all, but that it is possible for us to work under common agreed principles which are then applied in a way that uh, fits each setting. A classic example of that is marking and assessment policies. They can be agreed, preferably for me collaboratively, in principle, and then applied with discretion to suit each department's needs, allowing staff to practice what works for them and their students. The way in which those are monitored is based on impact and conversation not clipboards. What are you doing? Why is it working? Show me where it's working and show me what you're still developing. It's that professional autonomy and conversation which for me makes the process a dialogue and removes stress and workload. Similar approaches I've seen apply to schemes of learning and lesson planning. Staff are professionals and as long as they can demonstrate that what they're doing is having an impact and that we are all focused around student well-being and progress, then actually let's let people get on with what they know how to do. Which leads me on to time. It's a critical issue for all of us. I think there's quite a lot that's been said quite reasonably about self-management and how we all at times develop habits and practices that are not always the most constructive for us. Having said that, there are big things as school leaders that we can do that actually make life easier for everybody. Many schools now have online booking systems or logging systems which save time and workload. A lot of schools linked to those ideas around uh, good behaviour policies have centralised detentions which are administered centrally and supported by either middle leaders or senior team. Data collections, we only do three a year, I wouldn't consider six. Actually again, that collection and processing of data is really important. but. For us, a lot of that is already done by the time it gets to the members of staff. I need them focused on identification and intervention, not processing. Again, removing that lengthy process of reviews and paperwork attached. I'd far rather have a conversation with an action plan attached than I would receive a lengthy document. We often make sure that we review the calendar uh, and be clear that we're not creating pockets of busyness which we can absolutely avoid. The big one of course is time in the timetable. I will try as far as possible to keep contact time lower. We all face a funding pressure on that and there's a reality that we have to all accept and work within. But actually allowing people time to collaborate, to plan, to reflect has a huge impact and I'm absolutely sure is a contributor to healthy attendance, morale and well-being. So for me, clarity and consistency, professional trust and time. Those are the fundamental things that we as leaders can influence and have dialogue about 
that makes workload much more manageable. Thank you.